Hey there everyone, my name is Andrew and this is Canadian Starships. Welcome to update number 9 on the 1000 scale Galaxy Class Enterprise D project and Although there's been quite a break between updates and work being done, we are finally back at it because I've experienced some major issues with that secondary hull. It has fought me every step of the way. Just when I thought I had it secured down, it would just pop up on one side. I'd have to clean out the epoxy, put new epoxy in, clamp it down, and the other side would go. So I finally got enough epoxy in there and both sides clamped down at the same time, which was a feat because of the shape of the secondary hull. And it is finally really well secured down. I've gone through some of the gap areas above the deflector dish and I've filled those in with some epoxy to make it as secure as possible. I've gone back in to reinforce that with CA and I will also go in to fill that gap finally with my uh, epoxy sculpt filler which will also do some good bonding in there for those parts so it was a fight but we got through it and i can finally move on to other areas of the build so in this update we are going to hopefully i've been really bad at prognosticating these things but we are hopefully going to get working on installing warp nacelles and the neck all of those parts are going to need some major cleanup work before they get installed and I'm going to have to work really hard at making sure that that neck is secured really, really well. Now it's not going to be taking the brunt of the weight of the project because the armature inside is going to be bearing the weight, but I want it to be as secure on there in and of itself as humanly possible because I don't want to risk anything happening to this project when it is being shipped overseas. So let's get right at it. But before we get started, why not take a moment and click the subscribe button. And while you're here, click on that notification bell so you don't miss a single video. I'm going to start by working on the nacelles. The first thing that is important to note is that there is a lot of stuff that has to be cleaned off. There are these nubs from pouring points. There are areas like this here that has to be taken down. There's just cleanup all around the edge of the chiller grill area. And that's present on all the parts. I've gone ahead and marked SB for starboard as this is the starboard nacelle. You can tell by the little details that are on the bottom of the nacelle here. Those go on the outside. And I've gone ahead and I've drilled two holes in this part. Now these holes are to allow the wiring for the lighting to come up and they will be in different locations on each side as the wiring comes through a slightly different location on each pylon. And so those holes are going to line up with where the wires are on the pylons here. So I'm going to start working on cleaning up both sides and then the first part that gets installed will obviously be the bottom part because it's going to be the cradle for the lighting. I love how um, these warp engines are built bottom and top as opposed to side and side like the Enterprise E standard model kit engines are constructed because it gives you a bed in which you can actually put your electronics instead of trying to squeeze it onto half of it and then get the other half closed. So that's going to be a bonus. As I was preparing the nacelles to work on them by cleaning up all the extra stuff, I noticed a bit of a problem. You see here, you've got one chiller grill ridge, two chiller grill ridges, and then the seam where it's to meet the other half that has the other two grid lines for the chiller grill. But then you've got this raggedy line all through here, and that is all extra material that does not belong there. Now, the only way that I'm going to be able to clear that off and keep the entire piece flat the entire way across so that it meets with the other half well is to run it on the belt sander but i'm not sure if you can also see there is a raised section here this is a key to allow it to mate properly with the other half of the nacelle now in order to clear all this junk that doesn't belong here off the part i'm gonna have to sacrifice the key as well so i'm gonna have to just be very careful how I put the two halves together because there's no other way for me to deal with this. This is just a problem that was created during the casting process of the parts. And both halves on both nacelles are exactly the same way. So I've got to get the belt sander out, 
hook it up to the shop vac so that I don't get resin particles airborne and get these things cleaned up. So with all the work that had to be done on the nacelles, I went out and got myself my very own belt sander so I don't have to do an hour and 15 minute drive to my father's professional woodworking shop to use his equipment. So we've got a belt sander here. We also have a battery powered shop vac which is connected directly to the sander. Now the purpose of that is to collect all of the dust particles that are created during the sanding process because you don't want that getting into the air. You don't want to breathe that in. The other thing that's really necessary is a good respirator mask. Do not do this work without a respirator mask. The vacuum cleaner will pick up most of it, but you want to make sure that just in case it doesn't, you're not breathing in those particles. So I've gone ahead, as you can tell, by how messy the brand new equipment looks. Uh, which is set up in a disused area of the garage here, just across from where my normal working spaces are. And uh, I've gone ahead and I've worked on these. Now, I'll show you the, the nacelles. They're not perfect, and that's because of the way the molding has been done. There's some weird stuff going on in the back, and I will do my very best to clean that up when they get assembled. And so there's going to need to probably be a little bit of scribing, a little bit of... Uh, clear epoxy feel like that's gonna be fun but the majority of the work on it is done as far as getting it cleaned up and they are going to need to be really securely um put together as the epoxy is drying because i had to get rid of those location areas so i will show you these a little bit more close up now that the sanding is complete you can see that it looks pretty decent the problem here being that it's hard to get it perfectly aligned because I had to get rid of the alignment uh, parts inside here. But there becomes a greater problem on the end and this is the starboard nacelle and if you can see there the warp chiller grills are rather warped and you can kind of see in uh, one of these spots here where it really takes a big dip down. That's likely got to do with the end of the mold being pinched. If I was to guess, that's what it would be. Now, there are options to clean this up. I can get rid of all of the grid lines throughout the entire wart nacelle and then replace them with something like copper wire or 0.02 fiber optic strands, but to get those straight, perfectly straight, would be the biggest time consuming thing in the world. The other option would be to put this together, fill in the warped area with resin, clear resin, let it cure, and then go back in and rescribe the chiller grill lines. But again, that is such a time-consuming process. I got uh, in contact with the maker of the kit and although he can no longer sell the kit due to CBS being CBS, uh, he is able to support the kit and so he is sending me replacement chiller grills. Now the port side chiller grill is better but it's still a wee bit wonky there in the back and so I'm getting a matched set of replacement parts and that's just going to make the warp nacelles so much better as a final product. So while I wait for those to arrive I'm going to get working on the neck. So here is the neck piece and you can tell right away that although I have done the rough cleanup, there was a fair bit of rough cleanup to do, there is still some, some cleanup work. There is a rough edge here, the shuttle bays need to be dealt with. So all of that's going to need to be done first and then I have to get this thing prepped for lighting. And where is the lighting going to be you may ask? Well, the first thing I've got to do is figure out how I'm getting the lighting in to the impulse engine here. That is a fairly narrow piece that's going to present certain potential issues, but we will uh, deal with those as they come here. And we also have a whole pile of navigation lights. I've gone ahead and marked where the navigation lights go, and I would have to go back and look to see exactly which colors go where. But there's 0402 SMDs that will go here, 
And here, if you can see those little black dots on the underside, there are two 0402 SMDs, which will go on either side. But you can see where these go, that is solid resin. So I'm gonna have to channel inside here uh, in order to be able to get those 0402 SMDs in place. I may need to oversize the hole a little bit so that I can run the lights uh, in a little bit easier to give myself a little bit of extra wiggle room. And the window lights are going to be lit from here. Now I can't do the same trick I did on the secondary hall where I masked the windows from the inside. This, especially in the sides here, is just cast too thick. Now that's necessary for structural integrity of the kit. So it's not an issue that has been cast this thick. It is needed. And uh, it is beautifully cast with beautiful detail. Uh, it just, the nature of the kit presents those issues. So all the light blocking for this part, same with the saucer probably, will have to be done from the outside. So we will have to keep that in mind as we work on the project. So I'm gonna go ahead, start cleaning up this piece, get the part prepared, for the lighting and then we will install the lighting and then I've got to figure out how this is going to be mated with the secondary hull. It's going to have to be very securely joined. We're also going to need to navigate the armature up through the neck so it can go into the saucer which the armature is going to be bearing the majority of the weight on this project. <laughs> Using a drill bit on my battery powered Dremel, I created the channels in both sides for the wiring for the 0402 SMDs. You can see where the channels have gone into the clear resin. And I'm not sure if you can see or not, but there's actually the apertures for the 0402 SMDs to come through. On the top side, there's one here, then there's gonna be one on the saucer section. Both of those are gonna be constant on white. On the bottom, there's two on this piece. The inboard is white and the outboard is either red or green depending on the side. And then there's an additional constant on white on the bottom saucer as well. So what I'm going to do is I've got my 0402 SMD here. This is a white one and I've peeled back the shrink wrap over the pre-installed resistor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to desolder it there. Then I'm going to fish the wire side through the aperture from the outside in. I don't think I'm going to have any luck getting the SMD through from the inside. So I'm going to put them in the uh, backwards way and feed the SMD down through. That's going to be my easiest way to get these SMDs in there. Then I'll reattach the resistor and I also usually add my own resistor on the negative side for those. I've got all six SMDs wired up and installed epoxied into the model. So let's turn on the power supply and see what we get. Now they may appear super bright on camera, but in person they look absolutely perfect, both brightness and in size. And you can see there are the two on the top there. There's also corresponding white nav lights that will be in these locations on the saucer. So those will be done at a bit of a later date. I'm also considering that I need to install the neck to the lower saucer section before I install it to the secondary hull. So I'm gonna to have to start preparing the saucer section, uh, all of the LEDs and everything that are gonna be going into there. But next I'm going to install the LEDs for the impulse engines. I'm going to get the Let's see there, shuttle bays installed, just the hatches on the outside and they do require a fair bit of work. I'm also working on a pin system to attach the neck to the secondary hull. And although I won't be able to attach the neck until the lower saucer section is attached, I am gonna do the preparation work and pre-install the pins. There's gonna be two on the neck and two on the secondary hull. Um, 
that are going to be pre-installed and then they will be joined together and that'll give some physical connection point on this critical joint again the armature is going to bear a good chunk of the weight on this model so here we have two five millimeter leds embedded into the impulse engine we've had to clear out uh some of the housing and that'll have to be filled in and smoothed out before the part is attached to the secondary hull, which is going to happen at a later date. And if you're curious about why there's so many wires attached to these LEDs, that's because they are the programmable addressable LEDs. So not only is there the uh, positive negative for power, but there's also the data. So the blue coming in here is the data cable and then it hops from one to the other and then there is no data output on the second LED. These are tied to the deflector dish and to the Bizarre Collector LEDs and so there's going to be two red LEDs in the Bizarre Collectors which will actually be um, the exact same program as these LEDs for the impulse engine the way it's wired up which is kind of interesting to kind of work through all of that i need to do a little bit of light blocking probably put some tool up around here it's not going to be possible to light block from the back over on this side because of how they are epoxied in but i will do as much light blocking to prevent as much light spill as possible but a lot of that's going to have to be done from the outside on this in preparation for installing the pin system into the neck, I need to make sure that when I install pins on one part, they align with the hole that is drilled on the other. So to accomplish this task, what I'm doing is I'm using a little bit of the tulip black because it is a very nice thick paint and putting a dab on one side, putting the other piece on and transferring a little bit of that black tulip paint to the other side. Once that cures, that's going to show me exactly where the holes have to be drilled for the pins to be inserted. These are going to be threaded pins that are going to be epoxied into place that will give a little bit of extra security to the neck once it is attached to the secondary hull. So there's going to be two points in the back section here and then two points up in the front section. And... Uh, this will just be used to create that proper alignment that'll make assembling the neck to the secondary hull so much easier when that time comes. And I have decided that the bottom of the secondary, uh, sorry, bottom of the saucer is going to be attached to the neck before all of that is attached to the secondary hull. I think that's going to make aligning the project so much easier. And here we go, we've got the threaded pins, basically just screws with the heads cut off, inserted into these holes that have been drilled with a drill bit on the Dremel, so I could control the speed and uh, where it would go. And these will just be inserted into here and then the uh, corresponding spot on the neck, and they will be epoxied in place, and this will create a really good, strong, uh, grippy, attachment for the neck along with all the other epoxy that'll be in here and that will create a really good strong secure connection now i will remind you that the metal armature which will go through the entire thing into the saucer will bear the brunt of the support for this project but uh, this is a very critical joint and it's important that this gets as much strength as possible so this will sit in here they will not be epoxied in place until it is time to attach the neck with the saucer so that gives as much wiggle space for proper alignment as possible as you can see the holes are drilled just slightly larger than the threaded pin and that will allow uh, proper alignment if I was to epoxy these in, that would risk not being able to align the neck properly. And I wanna make sure that is done absolutely perfectly. And that's gonna be everything in this update on the Enterprise D Galaxy Class project. I know it's been a while since the last update came out. I've actually not been working on this for a little while because both myself and my family have been sick. So I am really excited that I am back at the bench working on the project and I'm really excited for some of the progress that's gonna be going on. Next up, I'm actually gonna start working on the lower saucer section because that's gonna to need to be joined to the neck. 
And that's going to involve working on the phaser array for the bottom of the saucer. And I've run into a little bit of a glitch with the way I thought I was going to be doing it. I can't actually set one of those strips of LEDs on its side because there actually just is not enough space inside the saucer, which means I'm going to have to chop the thing up, lay them flat down, and individually connect each one of those LEDs from the strip. That's going to be just some tedious, time-consuming work. But you know that the results of having both upper and lower saucer phaser arrays that it's just going to be absolutely worth it so it will be time consuming but i am excited to see the results to see that thing when it's done firing phaser arrays top and bottom saucer that's going to be really cool so i hope that you've enjoyed this update where we've worked on the neck and worked on the nacelles also just a note on the nacelles uh, it seems that those replacement nacelles have been lost by USPS somewhere along the way. They never got updated on tracking, so the supplier of the kit is going to be sending me another set of nacelles. That's just great customer service, so I am still waiting for those to come in. So, whatever work was done on the nacelles, that's really just scrapped because we're going to be getting much better quality casted nacelles for this project and that is going to just give a much better end result on the project as a whole so keep an eye out for that in the next update as well i hope that you've enjoyed it if you did make sure that you leave a like if you're new to my channel or you haven't done so yet why not hit that subscribe button today you'll make me very happy if you do but for now my name is andrew and this is canadian starships have a great day everyone